Greetings and peace of God to you all in Jesus' name. Uh, beloved brothers and sisters, thank you for joining from your respective locations, uh, wherever you may be joining from. Uh, last week, a friend joined from Uganda, and uh, we have had um, many brethren, friends, families joining from uh, different places. Uh, we um, had people joining from South Africa, uh, from the UK, Ireland, Australia, and different parts of Nigeria. Uh, so uh, wherever you have joined from, uh, you're welcome. Uh, you see, uh, in, the, in the midst of COVID-19, in the midst of the pandemic, uh, God has given us opportunity to share the word of God online and reach many more people. Uh, so uh, there is always something good even when uh, it seems so, so bad um, as it is now. And talking about the pandemic, um, I pray that the Almighty God keep all of us safe and keep all of us from all evil at this time in the mighty name of Jesus. So I want to formally welcome everyone to this um, program the Surefire Life Conference, the Surefire Life Conference. The aim of this uh, platform is to make the pathway to eternal life simple, clear, and available to all or every humankind. That's our objective. And therefore, every one of us that is here, you have two roles to play. Number one is to learn and gain eternal life. Number two is to be an ambassador to share this message with others. So please check our social uh, media platforms. You can see it on the invite that uh, was sent to you. And uh, please feel free to follow us, to share us, to like us. And that way we'll continue to spread uh, the word. Uh, today, we are continuing with our topic or the message that we have begun to share since the beginning of this month. And, and that is a follow up from the book that was shared also to um, uh, most of us. So if you never got a copy of that book, please, uh, today, ask for a copy and put your phone number uh, in the text box so the facilitator can give you a copy of the book. So the topic of today is to focus on part three. Part three, we started this uh, teaching on who is a Christian. Who is a Christian? Part one, which was more of an overview of the book and focusing on our model the BRRBL, BRRBL, the main focus was on the B and R. Believing, repent, receive, become, and then live. Live by faith and love. Um, last week, we focused on the R and B, the second R and B, which is receiving and becoming receiving and becoming today we want to look at the living the earth which is live by faith live by faith and of course as a christian our um, modus operandi is love so when we say live by faith and love uh, we're basically saying live by faith and be who you're supposed to be which is love praise the lord so our topic today is exercising faith and authority. Exercising faith and authority. This is a very important uh, point uh, for all Christians. Of course, uh, faith is not a new thing. Neither is authority a new thing. But let's, let's hear it in the context 
of the story we have been doing, uh, which is who is a Christian? And using the model BRRBL, BRRBL, we have been talking, uh, using and explaining that a Christian is one who is like Christ. A Christian is one who is like Christ. And how can one become like Christ? By receiving the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ. It is that Spirit of Christ that dwells in us that makes us like Christ. And hence, we are Christians. Um, last week, we also looked at how to receive the Holy Spirit. How to receive the Holy Spirit. We said the Father is faithful. And the Father has said he will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask. So basically it's by asking. And when you ask, believe God by faith that you have received him and you have received him the Holy Spirit. And when you have received the Holy Spirit, what then do you do? Live. And that's what we're here to look at. Live by faith. So it's easy to talk about faith, but living by faith um, it's another thing. It's another thing. And that's what we're going to be looking at. So when we say exercising faith and authority, exercising faith and authority, we're going into that realm of a Christian life where you live and there is evidence in your life that you are a Christian. Um, I remember reading the, or listening to a man of God who said that uh, he wrote a book Jesus the healer, and that's E.W. Kenyon, Jesus the healer. And he said that book was triggered by a question that somebody asked, came to him and said, we've been talking about faith. I hear people preach about it, but I just don't seem to have the faith. I just don't seem to have the faith. And so he took the man and explained a bit. Uh, explain rather, not a bit, explain a very rich book, explain. Um, so it is important to develop your faith. It is important to live by faith. So let's take our text and run through the message. And at the end, we will then have a bit of a discussion. Our text this morning, we'll take our text from Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. That's the simple scripture, and we all probably know that scripture. Uh, that same scripture you will see in Galatians chapter 3, verse 11, the second part. It says the just shall live by faith. In Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4, the same is repeated. The just shall live by his faith. Let's take the second text and then we will make a few emphasis on this. So the first text is Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. Our second text then is Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. And we are reading from the New King James Version. It says, Behold, I give you the authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Behold, I give you the authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So note there, the scripture says the enemy. It did not say enemies, the enemy, the power of the enemy. We have one enemy, and that is the devil that creates all the problems uh, to humankind. And by faith, we will quench all the fire of the enemy. And this was Jesus Christ speaking. He said, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Say, behold, I give you the authority, the authority. So we want to speak on exercising faith and authority. Father God, in the name of Jesus, 
the entrance of your word gives light and understanding. Lord, we pray by your Holy Spirit, teach us your word now, expound your word to us, give us understanding, and above all, Lord, let the evidence of your word be seen in our lives. Thank you, our Father, for we are prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So, we are going to start by talking about authority, first of all, authority, authority. I believe we all have a concept of authority. Authority is the right to exercise power, the right to exercise power. So then that brings in the question of what is power? Power is ability to influence outcome, the ability to influence outcome. In a country like ours here, Nigeria, many people will say, ah, some people are powerful. Some people are powerful, especially in the political circle. They will say that, that, that that's the, the power block of a state. Any side he takes in the political uh, um, uh, contests, that is the side that comes out victorious. What do they mean by that? They mean he is able to influence outcome. So power is the ability to influence outcome. The Bible says power belongs to God. So God has power. Power comes from God. God can influence any outcome that he chooses to influence. He is the ultimate power. Hallelujah. So when we say then authority is the right to use power or exercise power, we are saying that authority is receiving the right. You're given the right. You're not the one who holds the power to influence, but you're given the right to utilize, use power, exercise power. We must understand this concept very well. So like we just talked about um, um, uh, um, using the example in Nigeria, so we can connect, but it's not only Nigeria, everywhere. Ability to influence the outcome, that is power. So authority then is the right to use power. So you don't have, you're not the one who has the power, but the person who has the power is, has given you the right. And, we, and he has given you the right, you use it. So when we say exercising authority, then we're talking about using that right that you have been given. Using that right you have been given. So let's deal with authority first, and then we'll come to exercising faith. But you will see that these two work together, really. And this is now we're talking about living a practical Christian life. A life that there is evidence. Because many people say they are Christians, but there are no evidences to show in their lives that they are Christians. When the apostles of old received the same Holy Spirit that we have received as Christians, in Acts chapter 2, there was evidence. Things changed in their lives. It so changed that the um, uh, rulers, when they interrogated them, they said, are these not people that are not learned? They are not learned. So when and where did they learn all these things? They concluded that they were with Christ. They were with Christ. So they received Christ and something happened, uh, as we're going to see um, right now. So very quickly, let's look at um, a, a few scriptures. Let's, let's, let's look at a few scriptures to just bring those uh, two things uh, together, faith and authority. But we'll look quickly through authority. So let's look at Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 through 13. Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is dying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. Quickly, next. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word, 
and my servant will be healed. Only speak a word. Take note of that. Only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I also, I am a man under authority. Speak the word. Now, under authority. Having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go. And he goes. And to another, come. And he comes. And to my servant, do this. And he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said though, to those who followed, as shortly I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. I think we should just pause it there and leave it there. The, the, the rest you can read because of time. But let's bring an uh, interesting this, uh, point here out. So there you see faith and authority being brought together. You need to understand your authority. As I explained, that authority is the right given to us to utilize, exercise power. The owner of the power gives you the authority and you are to utilize and exercise because you have been given the right. So have we received the spirit of God through Jesus Christ, our Lord? We have become sons and daughters of God. We have been given the right as sons and daughters of God. And it is left for us to exercise that authority. Hallelujah. So let's confirm that as we look at the book of Romans, chapter 8. Let's start from 14. It says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. Are you there? Are you in that category? Hallelujah. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. That means God is my Father. My Father, my Father. So you have received the spirit of sonship, the spirit of being a daughter of God. And by that spirit of God, you can call God my Father. Remember when we were uh, dealing with uh, part one, we read from the book of John uh, where Jesus Christ, uh, the Jews accused Jesus. They said, you being a man, you said God is your father, making yourself equal with God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So let's continue with that scripture, please. Let's continue with that scripture. He said, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children then heirs, heirs of God and join heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we should also be glorified together. So the key word here is that by the Spirit that we have received, we have become heirs. Who is a heir? A heir is the, an inheritor of the blessing, the inheritor of what the Father has. So we are heirs of God. All that God has, he has given to Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ in turn has given all that blessing to us. As I use that word, all that blessing, I remember when people are doing land transaction, they will write an agreement, and in the agreement they will say, all that parcel of land, all that parcel of land, delineated as belongs to you. So all the blessings of God belongs to us. Hallelujah. Let's look at Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 to 4. Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 to 4. So we bring something out here. So you see what the problem is. Our God has, is, is not a, a lacking power. Our God is faithful and he has given us the power and the authority. But let's see one thing that is hindering the people of God. Galatians chapter 4 verses 1 to 7. But we'll just read a few and stop because of time. 
He said, now I say that the heir, remember who we are. We are the heirs of God, the inheritor of all the blessings of God. That's who we are as Christians. But he says, now I say to you, the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave. Another translation says from a servant. Though he is master of all. This is the level that many Christians are operating. They are operating as slaves. When you hear them pray, they pray with slavery mentality. You hear Christians begging. Begging on something that has been given to them where they are supposed to exercise authority. Because of lack of understanding. As the scripture says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. So I take that again. Now I say to you, I say that the hair, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, and is under guardians and still worship until the time appointed by the father. Even so, we, when we were children, were under bondage, under the element of the world, but when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. That is Jesus Christ who was born under the law, born of a woman, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying out, Abba. Father, the same scripture that we read before in Romans chapter 8, crying out, Abba, Father, therefore you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. You are a son, you are a heir. An heir of God. Hallelujah. We are heir. So we have the right. Is for us to exercise the authority. Like Jesus Christ said in that Luke chapter 10, verse 19. He said, behold, I give you authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. So we understand what authority is and we have seen. So we derive our authority from Jesus Christ who has given it to us. Because he is the one God has given all power in heaven and on earth. As it is written in Philippians chapter 2 from verse 9 to 11. God has highly exalted him and given him a name above every other name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Of those in heaven, of those on earth, of those beneath the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. So Jesus in turn has given us. The right to use the power that has been given to him by God. Hallelujah. So faith then, faith. As we read, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. What is faith? Beloved, I just want to keep this very simple. Faith is simply believing God and his word, and thereby taking action according to what you believe. But that's simpler said than done. Faith, I say again, is simply believing God and his word, his promises, what God has said. You believe God, and then you take action. You take action according to what God has said. As I said, this session is no more to speak of uh, the ones you know. It's simply to give us the key of how to exercise faith and authority. So I won't dwell too much on the plenty of scriptures that talks about faith because you know them. For example, you know Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 to 3. That's the General scripture for faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. 
for by it the elders obtain a good report. Verse 3 says, For we know that, we understand that the world that was framed by the word of God. The world, the whole world, God created it, God spoke it into existence by word, by word. So the just shall live by his faith. Let's take a few points then to bring this together. You have to know who you are, that you are a son of God. You have been raised to that position of sonship and a daughter of God. So you can exercise your, exercise faith. When you exercise faith from the point of knowledge of who you are, you utilize your authority, the right that you have. And the scripture gives us the whole information about our rights that we have not even scratched the surface. We have not even touched the surface of our rights. So how then do you develop faith? How then do you develop faith? So you can exercise your faith by authority. Let me make this point. That faith operationalizes spirituality. Faith operationalizes spirituality. So without faith, you cannot operate in the spiritual. You cannot operate in the spiritual. So faith operationalizes spirituality. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So faith operationalizes spirituality. So faith is the basis of spirituality. If you receive the Holy Spirit and you cannot exercise faith, you won't see any evidence, you won't see anything. So faith operationalizes spirituality. But how do we develop faith? That's the key now. Romans chapter 10, verse 16 and 17. Let's read that together. Romans chapter 10, verse 16 and 17. All right, let's read it together. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? Remember my definition of faith is simply believing God and his word and then taking action according to that which you believe. But we will see how you develop that and how you practicalize it. So the scripture here says, but they have not all believed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? You see the next verse. I wish you can echo it with me. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Let me make emphasis here because this is where also many people make mistakes. Faith is not assumption. Don't assume the word of God and then say, I am applying faith. Faith is not assumption. <laughs> That's the tough one, right? Faith is not assumption. Don't assume the word of God and say, I am applying faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. I will explain this. I had an experience of this once where I heard the word of God. That's by the spirit I heard God. God spoke to me about something. Uh, I'll keep that. And I said it and someone said, because it was a forum that we were interacting, somebody said, the sign of a fake prophet is that if he says something and it does not come to pass, then that is a fake prophet. Because I heard this one clearly. Even though I, I didn't even tell them that I was hearing from God because it was more of an, another, yeah, just leave it there. I then answered, I said, but if what the prophet says comes to pass, 
then that is the sign of a true prophet. And it was something that was uh, looking practically impossible to an ordinary mind. But it came to pass. It came to pass. So, hearing by the word of God. Believing God and his word, his promises, totally, completely, and acting upon it. So, what do you do then? Number one, I have said faith operationalizes spirituality. Let me also make the point that faith is the operator of grace. Faith is the operator of grace. Write that down. Faith is the operator of grace. When you have the key of faith and understand how to exercise faith and authority, you will see grace that is available to you, manifest to you. And let me make another point here before I go into enumerating the keys. God does not have special favorite children. God does not have special favorite children. So God doesn't favor me more than he favors you or anybody else. But what makes the difference is the degree to which you operationalize the, 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 operationalize the grace of God upon your life by faith, by faith. So it is the action that we take that makes the difference. Let me illustrate this very simply with an experience. I, I know about two uh, individuals who worked in an organization, very uh, uh, high profile organization. One person decided that he was going to focus on uh, making money for his life. And the other person focused on growing to the peak of that organization. The two of them grew in their respect, uh, respective ways. The other one didn't uh, make it so high. But by the time he left the company, where he lives, where he has his property, the chief executives of those, co those companies will have to borrow money to buy properties in those places. That is faith by action. They had different operation of faith and they got different results. The other one grew to become a very senior person in the company. The other one didn't reach that, but he was focusing on utilizing the resource that he was getting from the company. Fairly, I mean, I don't mean stealing, to make money, investing. And God gave him the wisdom and he was investing. Like I said, by the time he left, he had so much faith. The other one grew. That's it. So faith is the operator of grace. Faith is the operator of grace. So for you to exercise faith, number one, as I said, number one is believing God and his promise. Number two is to know the character of God. Know the character of God. You must know the character of this, our God, our Father. And I just want to mention a few characters of God that you must remember continually. Number one, remember that God is love. God is love. So God wants to give you all the blessings. God loves you. God loves the world. God does not want the world to perish. God does not want any evil to come near you. The scripture says, there shall no evil before you, neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling. The Bible says, as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from this time forth, even forevermore. God does not want any evil to come near you. God is love. God loves you. God loves you. Number two, you must know that God is faithful. God is faithful. So whatever God says, he will do it. Whatever God says, he will do it. Hallelujah. Our God is faithful. Number three, you must know that God is truth. 
God is truth. God is truth. Whatever God says, whether you understand it, whether it looks good to you or not, know that that is the right thing. That is the right thing. For example, God has said in his word, I have given my son Jesus Christ that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That is it. That's the truth. You can contest this till tomorrow. It doesn't change that truth. Jesus is the savior of all mankind. He is not subject to religion, tribe, or uh, any association. He's, he's available for all mankind. Jesus is the savior of mankind. He is the son of God that God has sent to save mankind. There are many other truths and promises of God. Hallelujah. Number four. Number four. Know that God is all powerful. Hallelujah. God is all powerful. And so whatever God says he will do, he has the ability to do it. He has the ability to do it. So you must know the character of this our God. And number five, because I said five things, you must know that this our God does not change. He doesn't change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what God did in the past, he can do it today. What he did in the life of Peter, he can do it for you. In fact, I often say to people, you can be another Paul. If you can exercise faith like Paul, you can do whatever Paul did. We have received the spirit of God that dwells in us. So you can do what Jesus did. The scripture said, Jesus himself was the one speaking. He says, if you believe in me, the works that I did, you will do also even greater works than this. So, number one, I was saying that you must believe God. Number two, you must know the character, character of God, which I have listed five characters of God that you must know. Number three point then is that you must listen to the Spirit so that you hear what God is saying. And number four, take action. Whatever God says to you that you can hear, you can hear, you can receive, take action based on it. No matter how impossible it sounds. And then the last point, number five, Set your goals. You yourself to set goals and walk towards that. I want to bring this to a close in case there are questions, in case there are interactions, given our time. As we look at the book of James, James chapter 2, James chapter 2 from verse 14. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith alone save him? If a brother or sister is naked, destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, and you do not give them the things which they needed for the body, what does it profit? Also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. So this is a scripture that talks about faith without works is dead. So faith without works is dead. So what then is faith? Faith is action. Be, by action towards what you believe, you act toward what you believe. So set your goals. You have the spirit of God. Let the spirit of God lead you, guide you. Prayerfully set your goals. How do you then release Having set the goals, knowing the characteristics of God and all that, you pray and you pray and then you declare. You declare what the word says, not your own word, but the word of God. So set your goals by the spirit of God. Declare according to the word of God. Find the scripture, find the word that support what God has provided for you because you're a child of God. 
and declare it and walk on it, act on it. Let me tell us that if you don't do something, God will do nothing. If you don't do something, God will do nothing. The story of David and Goliath is a clear illustration. Goliath came with a whole lot of armories against David. And David had nothing. But he said, I must do something. I must release my faith. He took a stone. Just a sling and stone that he threw. God acted upon it. It is when you take this action of faith that you see the manifestation of the power of God. Exercising your faith and authority. This is the key to living and obtaining and manifesting, obtaining the blessings of God and manifesting the spirit grace that is upon you and I. The Almighty God bless you. Thank you. So let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, our Lord and our God, for the word you have spoken to us. Thank you for the authority in the name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, right now, I ask concerning anyone that is sick on this channel, on this program right now, I ask by the stripes of Jesus, let that sick man, sick woman, sick brother, sick sister, sick child be healed in the name of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus, I command the sick to be healed. And I command you sickness, get out of that body. I take authority over you and I cast you out in the name of Jesus. Every demon afflicting the body of that man, of that woman, of that boy, of that girl, I command you demons in the name of Jesus. Pack and get out. I cast you out in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father God, for that person that is carrying such heavy burden, that is so tired, almost giving up. I pray by your spirit grace, enable him, enable her to finish her race, finish that project, finish that work in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord God Almighty, whoever the enemy has put heavy load that he or she is not supposed to carry, and therefore weighing him down, weighing her down, in the name of Jesus, I command that heavy load to be taken off. I cast that heavy load away. Evil load be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray for everyone here who has heard this word. I ask, Lord, by your mercy, by your grace, forgive every one of us. Forgive whoever has joined. Wash everyone with the blood of Jesus and please give your spirit grace the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus and make everyone who has listened in here a child of God a son and daughter of God and now may the Holy Ghost operate and manifest the power of God the fruit of righteousness the fruit of the spirit the grace for service the comfort and the communion, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and bring us all to that perfect man, that perfect person in Christ Jesus, that the day Jesus will return, or the day we will close our eyes in death, he will welcome us into his everlasting presence forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen.